Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Challenger Disaster. This space shuttle had many successful missions in the 1980s and it gained a lot of attention for its 10th mission on January 28, 1986. One of the reasons was that it was to carry America's first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe. Because of this, millions of people, including school children, were watching the launch live to see the historic event. Just over a minute into the shuttle's launch, as the world watched, a burning gas failure caused the shuttle to explode and disintegrate. It's thought that the crew may have survived the initial explosion, but not the resulting impact with the ocean below. 17% of all Americans watched the disaster live, and many people will tell you exactly where they were on that fateful day. At number 9, we have Tsunami. A massive earthquake shook the ocean floor. And and would send one of the most devastating disasters that we have ever seen to the shores of Thailand. There were thousands of people there, a mixture of tourists and locals, and no one would have expected what was about to happen. This picture was taken by one of Deborah Garlic's friends. In it, you can see her and a bunch of people on the beach trying to escape the cold and have a nice tropical summer. Not long after this photo was taken, a massive tsunami hit the shores of the beach and beaches all over the country. In total, there were 230,000 people who died, along with millions of dollars in property damage and people forced into poverty because everything they had ever owned was destroyed. These photos were developed and then given to Deborah's family so they could have a lasting image of their daughter and something to keep her memory in their hearts and minds. At number eight, we have Arjun Siena at the San Marino Grand Prix. Being one of the best drivers in the world, you never would expect you would meet your end in a crash. I mean, I guess you're kind of tempting fate by always driving super fast, but there are thousands of drivers who live long lives and never meet their end behind the wheel of their trusted machines. Artin Siena was one of the best when it came to Formula One driving. He was a three time champion and he was one of the favorites to win the San Marino Grand Prix in 1994. The young Italian man was only 34 at the time and this was one of the last photos ever taken of him. Look at him, he's cool, calm and collected. He's got the eye of the tiger and he was ready to take this race by storm. During the race he hit a corner a little too tight and lost control of his car and crashed into a retaining wall. Even though these cars Cars are built to crash and drivers crash all the time and walk away from it. Today he wouldn't be so lucky. One of the tires of Sienna's car flew back and hit him in the head. Then he was rushed to the hospital, but it wasn't even a day later before he was pronounced dead. At number seven, we have risking it all. It's crazy what people will do for their social media. I know it's a business for a lot of people, I mean I'm in that business myself, but I can promise you that I will never do something risky like this. All the pictures I post will be of me being lazy and probably eating some food and maybe some memes thrown in there. That's as crazy as it's going to get. This picture was taken at the world famous cliff known as Europe's End. It's a beautiful view, but this couple wanted to push the boundaries of a good picture. Unfortunately, this would be the last picture that this woman ever took. Moments after this was taken, she lost her grip and she fell to her death. At number six, we have trying to escape. I can't imagine how terrifying it must be to be in this kind of situation. I'm going to show you this and then I want you just to drink it in for a moment. Think of what that kid was feeling at that very moment. Falling from a plane at 200 feet in the air with no parachute. This is one of the scariest things I can think of. This was taken in 1970 totally by chance. An amateur photographer wanted to test out some of his new gear and caught this happening. Keith Sapsford had broken into an airport and snuck into the wheel well of a plane. He wanted to escape his old life. He wanted to see the world. His parents had just sent him off to an all boys Catholic boarding school and he refused to let that be his reality. He ran away and beelined it for the airport. He didn't know the wheel well would open again while flying. The sad part about this is he was doomed no matter what. If it wasn't the fall that killed him, the low temperatures and oxygen levels would have. And number five, we have Bud Dwyer's last moments. Bud Dwyer was caught up in some pretty shady stuff. And when you're a government official, you can't get caught doing something under the table or it's all over. You were elected to take care of the people and when you go behind everyone's back and do the opposite, the public will not be happy with you. He was the treasurer of the state of Pennsylvania and he needed to find an accounting company to correct a taxing error that overcharged thousands of people. He hired a company to go through this but not long after it was leaked that he took bribes from an accounting firm to give them the contract which was worth several million dollars. He was arrested and then sentenced but before he made his way to jail he called a press conference. He had the whole speech each written out. He talked to the press and at the end he pulled out a revolver and committed suicide on live television. The picture we're about to show you is the last picture ever taken of him before he died. Number four we have moments before death. I'm going to start this one off by showing you the picture and then we can do a breakdown. 
This looks so peaceful. You have a father and his son enjoying their time together. Before you get too sad, I'll let you know that the father and son in this picture both survived. But it's the car in the background that's the danger. Nobody knew what was about to happen, but an offshoot of the IRA had hidden a bomb in the car. This was intended to strike fear into the public and they did it strategically. They called in a bomb threat at the other end of town to move people closer to the bomb. And then when it went off, 249 people were hit by the blast. Everyone was sent to the hospital and 29 of them would die. This changed anti-terrorism laws in Ireland forever. At number 3 we have Flight MH17. For those of you who don't know, Flight MH17 was shot down by a missile while flying over the Ukraine. It was a devastating mistake and this was one of the last images that was ever sent off the plane before it was shot down. This is Gary and his mother Petra. It's such a happy picture and it's sad to think of all the other families that were on board this plane and how they thought everything would be fine. There would have never been any sign of anything going wrong until it was too late. At number 2 we have the Challenger launch. In 1986 a group of 7 people were set to jump into the Challenger space shuttle. It was supposed to be a wondrous moment in American space travel history but a small error, a failed o-ring would end up leading to the spacecraft failing and exploding over the Atlantic Ocean. 65 seconds into flight, NASA control orders Commander Scobie to go to full power. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. This photo was the last photo taken as they were headed out to the spacecraft. You can see how excited everyone is and why shouldn't they be? They were going into space. That is something that so few of us get to do and it is supposed to be one of the most amazing things you can experience. In total 7 people died in the accident, one of them being a school teacher. One of the scariest things about this crash is that some people believe that the people on board survived the initial explosion but were killed when the craft hit the water. Could you imagine how frightening that experience would be? At number 1 we have Mayinga Naseka fighting Ebola. One of the scariest things that has happened in recent years has been the outbreak of Ebola. There was a recent one in the 2000s that had everyone freaking out and for good reason. Two Americans who had been working to treat Ebola patients in Africa have been stricken by the disease. Officials say they will be taken to Atlanta's Emory University Hospital in a tightly sealed isolation unit. If you come in contact with this virus you're pretty much done. There is no cure and you have to hope through the right medical treatments that you will be one of the survivors. It literally eats away at your body until nothing is left but a husk. And the most the most recent outbreak isn't the first time that we've seen this virus make headlines. In 1976 there was a case of Ebola popping up all throughout Africa and because we didn't have the same technology back then there was a much higher risk of the virus spreading and becoming a major threat to humanity. But thanks to people like this we were kept safe from harm. This is nurse Mayinga Naseka putting herself at risk to save people with the Ebola virus. She was doing everything humanly possible to make sure people were comfortable and she was trying to stop the sickness from killing them. Unfortunately this would eventually lead to her own death. She contracted the disease and she would die that same year. Number 10 Black holes, incredibly scary, incredibly dark. And although that clip may not seem that scary, black holes are indeed terrifying considering what little we truly know about them. Not to mention researchers believe there are roughly about 10 million of them in our solar system. I know our solar system is huge, but researching this, I didn't know there was 10 million of them coming for us. This is actual footage from the Hubble telescope in 2015. Black holes suck anything and everything in with their gravitational pull and emit enormous amounts of energy. No one even knows what's inside of one because, well, no one has been able to be sucked in one and come back to Earth and tell us all about it. Coming at number 9 now, we have Columbia. The Space Shuttle Columbia was one of NASA's flagship spacecrafts. In 2003, it had already flown 27 successful missions to space. However, the 28th was to be its last. During the launch on February 1st, a piece of foam insulation broke off from the shuttle's external tank and stuck into its wing. NASA managers played down the damage and said there was nothing that could be done anyway. Upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, hot gas burst through the shuttle's wing, causing it to become unstable and break apart. All seven astronauts were killed, and NASA suspended its launches for two years while an investigation was launched. Coming at number 8 now, we have the Vostok explosion. On March 18th, 1980, the Soviet Union was preparing to launch a rocket carrying ECAR, a military spy satellite. 
At the time, the Soviet press reported it as a success. We now know that is far from the truth. Sometime before launch, the rocket exploded on its pad, blowing up 300 tons of rocket fuel that incinerated the whole area. The blast killed 48 soldiers, and many more were left with horrific burns. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Spaceship 2. This space plane was Virgin Galactic's main foray into commercial space travel. On Halloween 2014, co-pilot Michael Osbury unlocked the shuttle's feathering system too early during a test flight over California's Mojave Desert. The system is supposed to be used to ensure a safe descent, but it was deployed while the craft was still ascending. It disintegrated two seconds later, killing one pilot and injuring the other. The co-pilot was cited as partially to blame for the crash but the ship's designers were also faulted for not creating a fail safe system. The crash sparked a lot of debate about the safety of commercial space flight after decades of it being conducted by governments. Alright, next up at the number 6 spot now, we have Apollo 1. Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon as part of the Apollo 11 mission, but as you might expect, there were 10 previous space missions that were part of that project. The first one, Apollo 1, was a space disaster. As the crew went through the checklist before their launch, an electrical fault sparked a fire in their command module. In a matter of seconds, it burned them alive, causing death by asphyxiation. The inquiry that followed found lethal design flaws with the Apollo 1 module. If there is any silver lining to take from this story is that these safety improvements helped Apollo 11 successfully land on the moon two years later. Alright, coming at number 5 now, we have Soyuz 1. At the height of the space race with the US, the Soviet Union launched Soyuz 1, a capsule manned by cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. To put it quite simply, it wasn't ready. The engineers who built the craft knew it wasn't ready, the management team knew it wasn't ready, even Vladimir himself probably knew it wasn't ready. The craft had failed three earlier unmanned tests, not a single one succeeded. Still, the government put so much pressure on them that the launch went ahead anyway. Amazingly, Vladimir managed to reach space, but the problems had already reached critical levels. The whole shuttle was basically breaking, and the mission was aborted. Vladimir then had to manually re-enter Earth's atmosphere, which he survived, but disaster struck when the craft's parachute failed to deploy. It slammed into the ground at high speed, instantly killing Vladimir. For many people, this marked the Soviet Union losing the race to the moon. Alright, at the number 4 spot now, we have the Nederland catastrophe. This one is frankly astonishing, but the reason most of us in the West haven't heard about it is because it was a Soviet disaster from 1960 at the height of the Cold War, so it was kept tightly under wraps. Now we know the full story. On October 24th, 1960, the Soviet Union was testing an intercontinental missile using rocket technology. It was a 30 meter long, 141 ton missile called the R-16. As it sat on the launch pad, a short circuit caused the rocket's engines to fire accidentally. The fuel tanks blew up in a huge explosion. The fireball incinerated all of the nearby crew. In total, 78 people were killed and a further 120 were injured. The Soviet Union did not even acknowledge the event had happened for another 29 years. Alright, moving on to number 3 now, we have the Zi Chang disaster. In the 90s, American engineers were being forced to attach their satellites to foreign shuttle launches because of the ban on commercial payloads following the Challenger disaster we discussed earlier. One of these launches was near the small Chinese town of Zi Chang. The satellite was attached to the untested Chinese Long March. March 3B rocket. An error in the rocket's onboard timing system meant that it began to arc way too soon. The 426 ton missile flew for 22 seconds over a valley with buildings and people in before slamming into the side of a hill. The huge explosion sent shockwaves throughout the whole area. The Chinese government said that six people were killed, but international observers said that area had not been properly evacuated and as many as 500 people may have died in the disaster. Coming at number two now, we have the X-15. This was a joint project between NASA and the US Air Force for an aircraft that could skim just below the surface of space. The test flight took place on November 15th, 1967 and was piloted by Michael J. Adams. The craft successfully reached its peak altitude of 266,000 feet and began to pull a rocking maneuver on board so that the camera could scan the horizon. Unfortunately, this rocking sent the craft into a spin and then a nosedive. It reached speeds of 160,000 feet per minute and broke up during the descent. 
killing Adams in the process. And finally, at number one now, we have Soyuz 11. On June 7th, 1971, the Soviet Union Soyuz 11 space shuttle arrived at a space station on a routine mission. Three weeks later, they left to return to Earth. 12 minutes into their descent, a faulty ventilation valve opened while the capsule was still 104 miles above Earth. The three crew members suffocated to death almost immediately. The strange thing is, the ground crew had no idea anything was wrong at all. It wasn't until they opened the capsule that they found the three cosmonauts were dead and didn't know the cause of death until a full autopsy. Although they were on their way back to Earth, the fatal accident occurred in space, making these three men the only human beings known to have died in space. At number 10 we have Wall of Ash. What would you do in the face of a volcano? Would you pray for God to save you from this oncoming doom? Would you try to run for safety? Maybe you lock yourself indoors and end up like the most famous guy from Pompeii. Well, no matter your choice, I'm sure you'd be scared so bad you might pee your pants a little. I mean, look at this. Robert Landsberg took this picture in the face of terror and his oncoming doom. It was Mount St. Helens and it had just erupted and was about to send a murderous wall of unbreathable ash towards him. He snapped this picture because even though he died, he wanted some people to see the power of Mother Nature. I can only imagine the fear he felt as he saw this barreling towards him. All right, moving right along, number nine. But you'd feel their effect if they were to hit the planet. Okay, what is that? Gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, are the most violent explosions in the universe. So these things can happen when two neutron stars collide, or when a black hole swallows one of the stars, but however it happens, life on Earth would not be able to survive gamma rays. Even just one second of these rays could do enough damage to wipe out the Earth. But luckily they're said to only happen in like once in every 10 million years. So the only question is, uh, did one happen over 10 million years ago? Because are we are we due? Are we due for one? I don't I don't think so. I'm hoping not. Next up, number eight. The 1918 flu killed 675,000 Americans. 50 to 100 million people died worldwide. Of course, we have to throw this one on here. Well, pandemics are a serious way to wipe out the Earth. I mean, I feel like the Earth is being wiped out right now. A lot of us had a history lesson this year from the 1919 Spanish flu, and it's so crazy that 100 years later, it's happening again. And I'm not even sure if the Spanish flu shut down the entire world, like how the world is being shut down today. I mean, when we're like 50 years from now, this this is gonna be in our grandkids' history books. Absolutely insane that we're around for this. I mean, we were there for the 2008 recession. We're there for COVID-19. This is like a really hard lifetime, especially if you're from the 90s. We're going through a lot. And although most pandemics are said to be natural disasters, one thing this year has made us question is if this was a man-made pandemic. Is someone out there trying to control the population? Is biological warfare a real thing? Our right, moving along in at number seven. <laughs> Okay, what you just saw is a clip from a tsunami in Japan. This really happened. Tsunamis aren't anything new, but with climate change becoming more and more devastating to our home on Earth, if sea levels continue to rise because of ice melting globally, we can see a lot of our world underwater. It would definitely wipe out humanity and the entire Earth would become a modern day Atlantis. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't hold my breath for that long. Like after like 10 seconds, I'm tapping out. Number six. Wait, you guessed it. It's an asteroid. I mean, not too crazy to think this could wipe out Earth, since it's been said to have been done before. You guys know about the dinosaur, the dinos? Yeah, they were wiped out by an asteroid. They now can't see what's headed their way, but they can feel it. Number five. Right now, in the United States, one of the world's largest volcanoes is gearing up to explode. It's known as the Yellowstone Volcano. And it's not just any regular volcano. Nope. 
Okay, we all know that the Earth has many volcanoes, but there are some massive mountains that are ready to explode. And if they do, all of humanity would wipe out from the devastation. It may not be by melting everyone, but it would cause serious effects on our food crops and it would block out the sun for several years. Is this real life right now? That would be an alternate reality. And moving along in at number four, Solar flares in today's world would seriously affect humans if one occurred again that was big enough. The last solar flare in 1859 ended up interfering with small scale electronics. I mean, in today's society, we rely heavily on electronics for access. Think money to buy food, cars, news, media. I mean, we use it for communications. We use it right now to watch me. We could potentially be taken back hundreds of years of the dark ages and no way to Google ourselves out of it I mean, a world without Google. I, I remember a few years without Google. Okay, no, I, I was too young, but I just can't imagine. Every single day, I'm like asking questions to Google that I need answers to. Tonight, I'm going home and I'm gonna ask Google what happens if there is no Google. Coming at number three. Okay, so this one isn't exactly a natural disaster, but I had to put it on this list because it is very, very possible. Nuclear war. Considering countries having nuclear weapons, this is a pretty scary reality. A full scale nuclear war would kill hundreds of millions of people directly, and the aftermath would do irreparable damages to the earth. Nuclear winter is when the soot from the blast covers the earth and effectively freezes it over. But these are all theories, and I don't want to personally live through one to find out what would really happen. Number two, the sun. Well, this one looks happy and cute. I mean, it's depicted as a little baby here. Can anyone guess what show this is from? Leave your guesses in the comment section below. But in all seriousness, the sun is not a baby. In fact, it's really old. It's hella old. And an expanding sun would be the most disastrous way for humanity to end. We don't want Mr. Sun to get any bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to roast. The idea of an expanding sun is that it grows bigger as time passes on. The sun getting bigger means it would be in closer proximity to Earth, which would scorch us. I mean, you guys remember this scene from the Terminator? Ah! All right, in at number one, take a look at this clip. Overpopulation is a very real natural disaster that we're kind of living through right now. It is estimated that the earth will be home to 10 billion people by 2050. We will still be alive. I mean, 2050, that's only about 30 years from now. The problem and why it all puts all of humanity at risk is because the earth isn't getting any bigger and we're using up resources faster than ever before. If we can't feed our population or house our population, I mean, we're gonna be in pretty big trouble. Especially if one of these pandemics happen again, human beings can sometimes be the real virus. Humans identify the closest with the virus. We expand nonstop and we have no stable means of not destroying ourselves without expanding to a new planet. It is not a question of what we do, it's a question of what we are. Mm -hmm. 